have to bear with me because I'm filming this next to my window and it's quite noisy out there today, everyone's going to the pub. So um, I was just wanted to talk to you about bulbs. So um, I'm just going to show you in a moment the um, tulip bulbs and narcissi bulbs which are the most common I think for people using in their gardens and in their container gardens um, planting in autumn for spring. So um, tulips and narcissi, so easy to grow. I think um, it was probably the first thing I ever grew actually. Um, I couldn't believe you could just buy a bag of like dehydrated um, bulbs that look like old onions and then you could put them in the ground and then come spring you could have flowers. So um, I'd advise everybody to do that. Order their bulbs now and then you've got something to look forward to in the spring and we definitely need something to look forward to at the moment. Uh, so the tulips and the narcissi, I have, I've ordered all of mine. Um, I usually try and do it quickly. I'm doing it for other customers as well and also for myself. So I try and order them all quite quickly. Um, so I've got them in stock. Um, the downside to that is, although you get your order in, you then have to um, store them so that they don't get mildew or um, any fungal disease. Um, but I can talk to you about that in a moment. So um, yeah, places that I order my bulbs from. So one of the probably the obvious ones is Sarah Raven. Um, they are on the expensive side, but I think the benefit to Sarah Raven is their ca her catalogues are very inspiring. Um, she does lots of really lovely bulb collections. So you can order bulbs um, already um, sorted into a lovely color order and already um, you know, arranged so that you can buy them for successional growing. So you don't have to kind of do the work. She picks all the ones that will give you a really nice um, long display over winter, uh, sorry, over spring. And um, it's kind of all laid out for you. Um, but that, the downside of that is they are quite expensive, but they are good. Um, I definitely order some from her. Um, another one is um, very obvious, Jay Parker's. So they're much cheaper. You can either do Jay Parker, um, you know the normal website or you can do the wholesale website and on the wholesale website you can get a whole load more for um, far less money but then the downside to that again is that you have to order a great quantity of them so if you want to um, just order you know a selection of some I would advise using the normal J Parker website um, and looking on there they're much cheaper you'll have to do your research though because you'll have to kind of figure out what will go well with another one um, the early flowers the later flowers so I usually try and pick a selection of tulips and narcissi that give you continual um, flowers throughout the season so you don't just get them all in one go and then have nothing or gap. I try and make sure they really last me right through till May. You can get tulips that flower in May um, and they can start flowering sort of April time, maybe March actually. I think I had some flowering in March. Narcissi usually flower first and then tulips come after that. Um, so. Yeah, so that's Jay Parker. And then there's Peter Nyson. Um, I'll put below in the um, description the spellings of all these so you can look them up. But Peter Nyson usually has some really nice ones. Um, otherwise you can go to garden centres and you can buy them in garden centres in smaller quantities. Um, in my local garden centre at the moment actually they've got a really good deal on where um, you can go and fill bags up of your own so you can pick your, the bulbs yourself by hand which is I think really useful you can see if they're big healthy looking bulbs pick them yourself uh, so another place you can order your bulbs from is Diega so that's um, D J A G E R I think I'll, again I'll put it below um, there's two similarly to J Parker's there's two of them there's like a Diega for people to use um, if they want small quantities and then there's a really good Diego wholesale catalogue as well. So if you want to order large quantities, you obviously save a lot of money. Um, it's really good for me, for customers, if I'm ordering a lot for them. Um, and also for myself, because I order loads for myself too. <laughs> um, but you've got two options there. Um, Diego, they kind of have everything laid out in... It, it's a really beautiful catalogue. You've probably seen it. It's got like a normally hand-drawn illustration of like a Narcissi or something like that on the front cover and it's like white and quite like glossy looking as opposed to like not putting them down but a Jay Parker catalogue which kind of comes through the post a bit scrumpled up and you know it's quite um, garish and like colourful and looks kind of um, less well put together as Diego for example. Um, so yeah Diego kind of has everything um, organised into like varieties so you've got like um, you know anemone bulbs which are corms, anemone corms, tulip bulbs, narcissi bulbs, alliums that's another one, allium bulbs you can um, order now and you can think about planting those soon um, so you've got them for spring that's a, that's a really good uh, money saver actually because allium 
plants are usually quite expensive but if you plant the bulbs they're so much cheaper um, so that's another option um, what else do they have they have loads of stuff in there so definitely worth having a look ordering one of their catalogues they have some lovely things um, you can have a look at them online if you don't want to order a catalogue and waste paper you can look online you can order them online or you can call them up and order them over the phone so really easy to do also someone that I've actually started using this year is um, picked at dawn um, her name's Susie and she has um, a wall garden that she grows all her flowers from um, in Thursk in North Yorkshire and um, she has the most amazing flowers, amazing varieties, amazing plants. Um, I ordered lots of little plug plants from her this year. Um, she, yeah, she's great and she started selling bulbs. I just noticed the other day she started selling bulbs on her website so definitely check her out. That's picked at dawn um, and order some of her bulbs. She's got some really beautiful um, varieties, some like parrot tulips, uh, parrot tulips, yeah, parrot tulips, and um, lots of really nice um, narcissi. Oh, there was one on there that I really wanted. Um, she's got some beautiful, beautiful things. So have a look at her as well and try and support the smaller businesses um, rather than the big corporate companies because they need it more than ever right now with everything that's going on. So if there's somebody that you know who sells bulbs on a a lower scale, um, I 100% buy them from there before you buy them from all the large um, corporate companies. Um, when you receive your bulbs, they need to they need to be healthy. They need not to have any mildew on them, or um, you know they can be a bit rough and ready. They're not going to be like these perfect looking things. But make sure you when you get them in the post, um, you receive them. They don't have um, like any form of mold or mildew because then they're not going to work. I think the first year I ever grew bulbs, I ordered a load of tulips and when I received them they were sort of mouldy looking but I had no idea so I just thought oh maybe that's what they look like. None of them, none of those ones worked so make sure um, you check over your bulbs when you receive them. Just another note while we're on that is make sure you store your bulbs um, somewhere where it's not too hot and somewhere where it's not too cold. Um, I've I usually when I get them I look at them I, I have like net bags that I try and separate them all into or if you have like trays or cardboard trays or plastic trays um, that you can reuse um, you can place all the bulbs laid out in there make sure you label them all so you know what they are um, but try to keep an eye on them because I think if you leave them in bags all bunched together in like a cardboard box you'll come round to planting time and open them up and you might find they've gone mouldy or they just haven't lasted very well so you need to be careful of that. Um, so yeah, I have ordered loads of tulips and narcissi um, amongst other things as well um, to plant in my container garden which I'm really excited for. Um, I did it last year and everything was lovely but I've gone kind of real crazy this year. I think because over um, these last few months I've accumulated far more containers so I've got far more to fill. I've also got a tiny garden which we didn't have this time last year um, to fill as well so I've gone crazy and I can't wait. Um, so on another note um, there are three categories there's bulbs, there's corms and there's tubers. Um, so when you're researching bulbs to buy um, you'll find bulbs usually cover tulips and narcissi. There's corms um, so that covers anemones, Cornish anemones which are really nice for cut flowers that you get them in like purples and blues and uh, reds and whites. Um, so when you're planting those you'll notice they look really small and shriveled up and like really black in colour um, and they almost look very dehydrated. Um, people say that you should uh, rehydrate them by putting them in water the day before you're planting them. Um, but anyway so that's corn and when you're planting them they just get lost in the soil because they just look they just look like bits of compost or something. They're really unusual looking and um, so I haven't got any to show you now but they are completely different to the tulip or narcissi bulbs that you're used to seeing. I haven't got enough time now to go into it in too much detail but so you've got bulbs, corms and then tubers. Tubers are um, like dahlia tubers, they grow from a tuber, a potato is a, comes from the tuber as well so you've got their different forms of storage organs basically um, but when you're looking for narcissi or tulips they'll come under the category of bulbs spring bulbs <laughs> and um, I haven't planted any of mine yet because it's just too early on in the season we've just had this um, week of really warm lovely sunshine yes the temperatures dropped a little bit but it's not dropped enough to be bulb planting yet um, so why because tulips um, can get this horrible fungal disease called tulip fire so if you plant them into the soil too early on and the soil isn't cold enough, it won't be able to kill off that fungal disease. So they often 
when um, you see a tulip in flower that's got this fungal disease that you'll see later on, their, their, petals, uh, their petals and their leaves all look burnt and scorched and sort of mouldy like, like tulip fire, like they've been burnt and the flower doesn't develop properly. So it's really important that you don't sow your bulbs, plant your bulbs too early on. And um, there are bulbs that you can plant early on, but I don't plant any of my tulips um, or even my narcissi until I think November. I mean, you could in October, late October, if you really wanted to, if you're desperate to get them in the ground. Um, but I would say to be safe November uh, because temperatures should have dropped by then. I mean, this is probably gonna change in the future because every year we're getting warmer and warmer autumns. Um, but yeah, November to be safe. So um, you'll be wanting to plant them then. So hang on to them for a bit longer. You can order them now and you can get excited about planting them and you can be inspired by planting them, but don't sow them just yet. I will do a video on how to plant how to plant your bulbs or your tubers and your corms or whatever um, when the time comes. Um, I've got so many pots to fill that I will definitely film some of that. I'll also show you how you can plant them straight into the ground. I'll show you what depths you should be planting them at. I'll show you how you plant the bulb and um, like distancing and also I'll talk to you about bulb, I call them bulb lasagnas because um, there's a really nice way to layer bulbs in pots to get a really lovely impactful um, display of, of flowers when the time comes in spring so um, I can talk you through that as well and when buying bulbs um, I think more is definitely more don't kind of scrimp on bulbs don't kind of buy I don't know, just like four or five, unless you've got a very small pot to fill, because you'll be surprised that when you're actually planting them, how many you need to really um, give impact. So I would buy them in large quantities if possible. So talk to you in, in the future about the compost and what you want to what you want to plant your bulbs into. Um, I usually use a mix of um, like a John Innes potting on compost um, mixed in with grit. Um, I would say about two thirds compost to one third grit because if like last year we had a very wet and rainy autumn and winter you don't want your bulbs to get waterlogged and another thing is if you're planting into containers you'll definitely want to make sure you've got drainage holes but having the grit there as well should help to drain and absorb some of the water and um, so your bulbs aren't just sitting in loads of water because they'll just rot off and they won't work. Um, I'll also talk to you when I plant my um, bulbs into the containers about what you can have on the top to give um, a nice display in the pots until the bulbs come up through them. Um, so all these things we can discuss um, you know, later on, but I just wanted to quickly chat to you about bulbs. So when you receive your bulbs, you'll either receive them in a net like this, or you'll receive them in a little um, paper bag like this. Um, I prefer storing bulbs in these these nets because you get air to them, there's airflow, you can hang them up for easy storage. Um, I think sometimes when you keep them in paper bags they can get a bit mildewy and rotten but I mean they're probably okay. It's just if you have a preference or if you have anything or if you have any sort of bags laying around like this I would definitely recommend these. Also these are reusable, yeah they're not, they're not the best for the environment, they're plastic but I literally keep these every single year and just reuse them. Um, so that's that. So I'll just show you what you're expecting your bulbs to look like. So this, mm, I should find a better one. A good example of a narcissi bulb is this. So this is how they'll come. Um, as you can see, they're quite large actually. And this is actually for one a really tiny narcissi. This is for um, narcissi something minnow, I think. Um, I planted it last year, it's got these tiny, tiny little creamy yellow flowers um, and it's one, a good one for forcing and for having inside the house as like a house plant rather than in the garden, although you could at the front of a border or the edge of a pot, um, but I really like these for the house. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a bulb as opposed to a corm or a tuber and these are the roots here. You can see they're all dry and crispy, it looks like an old onion. I mean, how this turns into an narcissi blows my mind every time. Um, and then you see here, this is where the stem will grow from. So when you're planting them, you'll want to plant them up this way. Roots there, stem there. Um, it's not so obvious on a tulip bulb if you're a beginner, um, but I'll show you that in a moment. So this is what a healthy narcissi bulb should look like. So put that back in the right bag so I don't get the varieties mixed up be good and then these are tulips so 
They don't often have those roots hanging down, so that's a way to tell if it's a tulip. They often have this sort of really pale, um, pinky brown, um, soft skin, and then quite like a pointed little top to them where the stem will come from. I'm trying to get that to focus for you. Is it going to? No, it's not. Anyway, that's a tulip bulb for you to have a look at. Uh, a healthy one and then I actually have received some which I'm not really too happy with because they're already showing signs of um, mold and mildew I don't know if this is the best one to show yeah look you can see it's all mottled and looks a bit mouldy I think it's probably going to be okay um, but you know it's not as good looking as the last one you can see and funny because these are actually quite dark in colour they're not usually this dark in colour I don't know, I'm not the best, best pleased with how they're looking. Look a little bit too mouldy. So anyway, there's just a really brief, um, you know, touch base with bulbs and um, what to expect. Um, but there'll be lots more about this later on in the season, in November. Um, hopefully things will still be good then. And oh, It's been such an anxious week, I've had a horrible week this week. Just feel so anxious about it all. So... It's great to immerse yourself in bulbs and just think about bulb planting, bulbs, spring, better times ahead, um, having something to look forward to. Um, I'll really quickly, I'll touch on it. Um, you can force Narcissi for Christmas time. Um, you can do this, um, I probably have to talk to you about this another time because it's quite, you can go into depth about it, but you could buy like um, some nice scented pa Narcissi paper whites. Um, anything that would be nice on the table at Christmas and you can get them going early you can also force hyacinth as well um, amaryllis will you can get them going for Christmas time um, so these are all bulbs that you can grow um, indoors um, or in under glass and then you can get them flowering for Christmas whereas everything else usually grows in the cold um, it takes so much longer to grow so it won't be around till spring um, so that's something else you can do as well and there are so many other bulbs, um, corms, that you can grow. Um, there's lots of lovely like Fritillaria, um, Muscari, um, Scylla, uh, Chinodoxia, uh, Aranthus, Cyclamen. There's loads and loads and loads and loads of bulbs that you can grow and corms you can grow. Um, so just try and experiment. If you see anything that you like the look of, um, try and experiment and just see what happens. It's the beauty of it. And um, there's not really a lot that can go wrong. Alright, any questions again, just let me know below in the comments and uh, I'll get back to you. Thanks.